Now this TriCaster comes with some virtual inputs as well, and our virtual input is a lot like having a switcher inside of a switcher. It allows you to set up a complex layered video effect and then access it with one button, just like any other channel on the switcher. Now, if you look at the switcher, you'll see V1 through V4 right out here. These are the virtual inputs on the switcher itself. And there's also V1 through V4 tabs right down here. And these are the setup areas for those virtual inputs. So we're going to start out on virtual input number one. And we're going to put it on preview and program. And I'm going to come over. The virtual inputs also have presets. So I'm just going to start out on a fresh preset so that we can set it up from scratch. You can see how we do this from start to finish. So we're going to start out with an input that has somebody over a green screen or possibly a blue screen. And we're going to want to remove that background to use them in a composite or a layered video effect. So to do that, we're going to go to our input. We can see we've got a green screen input coming in here. We're going to go ahead and click on the gear. And we're going to go to our live mat controls. Now this is the matting system that comes with the TriCaster, allowing you to remove the background. The first step of removing the background is choosing the color that you want to remove. Simply left click on the eyedropper, keep the left mouse button depressed, and drag over to the green area and let go. It will instantly choose that color green and turn on the live mat, and you'll get an approximate key. Now you've got controls over here for the tolerance of the key, for smoothing to get rid of any jagged edges that might be appearing around your talent. There's also a luma level that allows you a little bit further adjustment and some spill suppression to get rid of any green that might be left over on the talent. And playing around with these controls will give you a real good idea of how to pull a great looking key. It's very simple. There's just a few controls and after a few minutes you'll master pulling a great key. Now, one tip that I can give you is, if you are having a problem pulling a key, you might want to try sampling different areas of the green. You're not going to have a completely even green screen in the background, at least I don't most of the time, so choosing different colors of green in the background can give you different results and allow you to pull a much cleaner key much, much quicker. Now, you'll notice in this shot that we have Kiki's hands, and every now and then Kiki's head dips into the shot, and we want to be able to get rid of those. So right down here, you have cropping controls. And we can start cropping in. We have left, right, top, and bottom cropping controls. So I'm going to start cropping in from the left-hand side. And I'll wait for Kiki's hands to show up here. And you'll see that we can start cropping her hands right out of the picture. There they go. So, And I crop all the way over to Rex. Oh, there's Rex. So I'm going to come back a little bit. And now I know that my crop line is running right on the side of Rex. As long as he's not going to enter that area, I'm going to have a nice clean key and I've completely removed Kiki from that shot. Now what you're looking at is a composite or a key basically of input A over input B. So input A is the camera that I have Rex coming in on right here. And input B right now is set to DDR number two, but input B could be a live input. It could be one of my network inputs, if I wanted to key him over a PowerPoint or over some other sort of computer display, a web page, something like that. It could be keyed over the top of one of our DDRs to play back a variety of media. Any input can be used as the source. But probably the coolest thing to do is to create a live set virtual set effect. And you can do that by clicking on the gear right here. This will bring up a media browser showing you all of the virtual sets that are available inside of the TriCaster. And there is a large variety of them. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to work with the Plaza set. And the Plaza set, like most virtual sets, has a few different options. It has a center camera angle, a left camera angle, and a right camera angle. It also has two double box effects associated with it and an alternate zoom target. So you can choose to zoom directly in on the center and just zoom in on the talent or zoom in on the talent and the monitor. We'll take a look at that in a little while. So let's start out just by using our center shot. And we can now see that input A is now the talent sitting behind the desk. And input B is now what's happening on the monitor here inside of our virtual environment. Now, a great thing about working with the TriCaster's live set virtual sets is there's no need for a camera operator. 
Even though we're working with a lockdown camera with no camera control and no camera operator, you have the ability to zoom on this virtual set from within the TriCaster. Now that can be done with the mouse right down here within the virtual set setup and you have the ability to click on these thumbnails. You can also determine what the zoom level is going to be by left clicking and dragging on this little gauge above the thumbnail. It defaults to 0, 33, 66, and 100 to give you nice incremental zooms, but you can set them to be whatever you'd like them to be. Now, from the control surface here, you want to make sure that you're telling the control surface which virtual input you're working with. I'm working with virtual input number one, so I want to select virtual input number one. Now, my zoom controls are right up here, and you can snap to the four different levels of zoom, but you also have the ability to animate that zoom over time. So here on the interface, you have your zoom, animate zoom control, which you can turn on and off. Again, here on the control surface, you have an animate zoom button right there, and now you can see that the zoom is animated over time. Now you can also change the speed of that zoom, and you've got a pop-up right here where you can go to medium, or you can go to fast. You can even do it while it's zooming and change the speed during the zoom. On the control surface, you also have a zoom rate knob, so again, you can spin this knob and you can go faster than fast or slower than slow or in between any of the presets, but it's also a button. And pushing the knob is going to cycle you through slow, medium, and fast preset speeds for the animated zoom. You also have a manual control right here. You can grab with the left mouse and you can manually zoom. And no matter how fast you try and zoom, you always get a nice smooth zoom in and zoom out with our live sets. You can also do that from the control surface. From the positioner area, again, you want to make sure you have the appropriate virtual set selected here. You can now just select virtual zoom, and you have a zoom that you can control with the joystick, just like you're controlling the zoom on the camera itself. Now, another neat trick that you can do when zooming in the TriCaster is you can stop the zoom at any point in time, even from these controls or from the thumbnails. What I mean by that is, I'm zoomed all the way in, and I'm going to hit zoom number one, which is going to start me to zoom all the way out. But before that zoom is complete, I can hit zoom number one again at any point in time, and it's going to ease into a stop for me. So I can stop and start the zoom at any point in time just by repeatedly hitting that button. Now, as you know, every input in the TriCaster, you can crop, scale, position, and rotate. And this includes the inputs being used inside of a virtual input. So for instance, we have Rex as our talent. And if we needed to be able to move him within the virtual set or scale him so that he looks proportionally correct, you can do that very easily. Again, you want to make sure that you have the appropriate virtual input selected in the virtual input delegate. And you want to make sure that you select virtual input A from the control surface. Now, if you're doing it from the setup in the interface itself, again, we're working with virtual input A, you would come across and you would click on the crosshair here, and this brings up our same um, controls for scale, position, rotation, all that stuff right here on the interface. So again, I'll just work here from the control surface. I'm going to go to position and scale. I have virtual input A selected. You can see now I can move Rex around from within the scene. I can move him up and down as well. I can twist this knob and we can scale. So if we want him to be bigger or smaller, we can do all that. I'm just going to go ahead and reset him. We also have the ability to rotate. So we could rotate him around to the other side if that made more sense. No problem at all. And we also have the ability to crop as well. Let me show you what I mean by switching over to another input. So here down on input A, we're using number one, which is Rex's single shot here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to input number two, and this gives us Rex and Kiki behind the desk. We're using this shot now as input A, and you can see them in the virtual set. So again, I do have the ability to crop this input. So I'm going to go ahead and select crop, and if I take the joystick and I move it to the right, I can crop Kiki out of the shot. Then I could go to position and scale, and I could move Rex back into the center of the shot. Now, maybe I want to be able to crop Rex out of the shot. The joystick on the control surface has a little button right on top of it. Pressing that button, now you're cropping in from the right-hand side. And then we can position Kiki into the center of the shot. So you see, it can work either way. Let's go ahead and reset these. And again, if you're cropping top and bottom, 
Without pressing the button, you can come down from the top. With pressing the button, you can come up from the bottom. Now, as we know, you can crop, scale, position, and rotate every input, and that includes input B coming in into the virtual input. The input B is the video playing on the monitor right now, and again, you can select virtual input B. Again, you want to make sure you've got the appropriate virtual input selected on the delegate, which we do. And now you can scale the video inside of the monitor. We can make it really big. We can move around on the video, zoom in on a specific portion of that video that we want. You have complete control over that video wherever you want. Again, we can always reset it to get it back to where we want it to be. So crop, scale, position, and rotate can be done on any input, including the inputs coming into the virtual input inside of the TriCaster, alleviating the need to have any kind of camera operator when using the virtual sets. Now, there are a wide variety of virtual sets available in the TriCaster. You can see here that we have a lot of different looks, styles, and themes of virtual sets that we can use. Let's go ahead and take a look at just a few of the virtual sets that are available inside of the TriCaster. The TriCaster will support two people behind a desk or one person behind a desk in different themes and styles like news, sports, talk show. There are full standing sets. All have on-screen monitors that you can populate with your graphics or even live video inputs. There are also medium shots, very popular on today's clip shows on television, as well as a variety of double box effects all ready to use in the TriCaster as soon as you fire it up. But very often, customers want to be able to create their own virtual sets or modify virtual sets for use within the TriCaster. And this is possible using an add-on for any HD TriCaster called the Virtual Set Editor. Virtual Set Editor will allow you to take content that was specifically made for Virtual Set Editor, load it up, and then modify it. You can do things like change all of the colors of any of the elements within the set, you can add and remove items from the set, completely changing the look of the set. You can change the talent from one person to two people, from seated to standing to medium shot. It's up to you. You can also add your own logos to the sets, further customizing your virtual environment. You can change out the background imagery, even put a live video camera immersing your virtual environment into any live venue. You also have the ability to frame up where the zoom is going to happen within the virtual set. And once you have all of your variables set, you can export the set. It's ready for use in your TriCaster Live production, including real-time reflections. Now, you also have the ability to create your own virtual sets from scratch using your own artwork, using the layered sets, or compose your virtual set inside of Photoshop, save a PSD file, and that PSD file can be loaded into the virtual set editor, which will then convert it into a live set virtual set for use in your TriCaster Live productions. It's never been easier to create your own effects than it is with virtual set editor, including double box effects. You can position and rotate the boxes, change out the background, even add imagery, and it all becomes part of the effect. That's the virtual set editor, great add-on for any TriCaster. Remember, there is a demonstration version of Virtual Set Editor with every TriCaster. So you can go ahead out to the home page and go to add-ons and fire up Virtual Set Editor and play around with it. Anything that you make in the demo will have a watermark on it, but it'll give you a real good idea of what's possible and how easy it is for you to customize and create your own virtual sets. And then just buy a copy of Virtual Set Editor, install it, and all of the watermarks will be removed. Now, each virtual input also has its own overlay. That's our third row here inside of this interface. And if we're looking at the control surface, we have input A, input B, and our overlay bus. And again, you can delegate which virtual input you're working with right over here. So you can use any of the inputs coming into the TriCaster as your overlay bus. And we can go ahead and bring that overlay up. You see we've got Kiki's lower third down there. And this gets locked to that input. We can go to any other input in the TriCaster. You're not going to see it, virtual or otherwise. It doesn't matter. 
you're not going to see that overlay. Only on virtual input number one do you see that overlay. So if you wanted to create a bug or have some sort of graphic that's always attached to a specific input, you can do that by using the overlay inside of the virtual input itself. And this is completely independent of the two downstream keys available in the switcher. Now there's also a special virtual set that comes with the TriCaster and it's called the Nightly Show set. And when you load the Nightly Show set up, input B is more than just the one monitor behind the talent. You'll notice that there's a lot of video playing on all the monitors. Even back in the control room there's video playing on those monitors and there's a ticker tape. And all of this is being fed by one video clip from DDR number two. So this is the video clip that's being used to feed all of those monitors. And the virtual set is smart enough to know that it breaks up these video clips and puts them on the individual monitors. Even the ticker tape gets put, or the, uh, the text crawl here gets put up on our ticker tape. And again, if you look at the virtual set, you can see that it's a great looking effect. Looks like we've got a lot of video going on back there and it's all coming from one DDR. So if you want to be able to set up your own video clip that looks like this, the TriCaster comes with a template. So if you load the template up, the template looks like this. And you can see you've got all of these places to put video clips. And if you use that inside of the DDR while you're looking at the virtual set, you can actually see exactly where every video clip and where the text is going to go. And you can use this as a way of saying, OK, I want this video on the main monitor, these videos on these monitors, whatever I want back here. Layer your video, scale it down so it fits in between, make a, a text crawl that fits right where the ones are here, and then run that in the background, and you'll go from the numbers into a beautiful looking virtual set populated with your video. Again, here's another example, changing out the video in the background, and we're just changing out the video clip to change out all of the different monitors going on inside of that virtual set.